My name is James Smith and today, and I've made a video for obese people. A lot of you don't know where to start. There's a lot of conflicting information online and I'm going to break down a load of things, make it very simple. I'm not even going to ask for your money. Good morning, guys. It is 7.45 a.m. We are at Bronte Beach. Every single day on YouTube, I'll be posting a video which is designed to help you deal with your problems. It's cold. It's nine degrees Celsius. What's that in Fahrenheit? No one cares because we don't like Fahrenheit. Please feel free to use the comments at any point to project a problem which you think I could provide the solution to. A lot of people have also asked me for a day in the life vlog, so I kind of interject them together. Celsius, 100 boiling, zero freezing. Why fuck with that? Almost like the world's first informative vlog. Vlog formative. The water is going to be freezing. Before we get into things, let's look at the classification. You would have clicked on this video or watched it because you think you are obese, which is a good start. How do we determine if someone's obese? One of the main ways we have is the BMI, the body mass index, which definitely has its flaws. For instance, I'm on there as overweight. I'm only one echelon away from being obese. And I know the summer rig is caught up with me, but fucking, I wouldn't say it's a fair or accurate means of quantifying my self-worth. However, people have so much hatred for BMI, it can be a good predictor across all populations. But a lot of the downsides are things like not all weight is considered equal. Freezing, but we do it anyway. Why? Because we can. So if I've got kilograms of muscle or fat, I'm still gonna get the same score. And it certainly wouldn't be relevant for all populations. Everyone's like, oh, the England rugby team are all obese. Well, they're not. They're just very heavy for their height. So it's important we don't take the BMI at face value. So rather than turning to the BMI, to determine if you're obese, I would look at these things. Is your current amount of body fat negating your self-esteem? Is your current amount of body fat making you feel unhealthy? Is it giving it? It's a great morning routine here in Australia. Get the sun in the eyes. Andrew Huberman would be happy. It's our park. Oh my God. Is your current amount of body fat making your life worse than it needs to be? Over your shoulder, girls. Froth on this. Is your current amount of body fat something that you think in time will only cause problems for your lifestyle and your health? Benefits of cold water, um, cold water immersion. <laughs> and if the answer is yes, then it's probably time you did something about it. You feel good after. Everything's easy after this. Right? Oh, got work. Oh, bit of stress. Nothing. Jumped in icy water. You wanna, what's that? You want to have a look? I'll tell you. Come on. I'm not afraid to call fat people fat people. So people think I'm fat phobic, but I'm not. I'm quite literally making you the world's most concise guide to how to deal and start treating the issue of obesity. The fuck's my coffee? We'll see we go. There is a lot of stigma with obesity, and it stems from one side of the argument, you know, are obese people going to take up resources within hospitals? Yes, but so are smokers. We looked at things like COVID. Being obese was a predictor for being hospitalized with COVID-19. Another way the stigmatization kind of occurs is society rewards things that are hard to get. Notoriety, hard to get. Fame, hard to get. High levels of income, the majority of the time, hard to get. Launching a business, hard to survive. And being in shape is fucking difficult and it requires sacrifice. Like any of the other aforementioned things, if you think this is going to be easy, you're being naive. That is why I believe a lot of people will struggle to accept obesity because it's not hard to be obese. Human beings are hardwired to eat food. And if there is more than enough food, we are hardwired to overeat that food for times there are not. Food has only been omnipresent for such a small period of time for humans. You literally can't fill up your car with flammable liquid that came out the ground from thousands of miles away without having 3,000 different types of food that you can easily digest hyperpalatable hedonic foods. So when people wonder why people are obese, I'm like, it's because they're not fighting their primitive urges. And there's a spectrum as well. Some people don't have to work very hard to be in good shape. They don't. They don't have that relationship to food. And also for any of you watching this, trauma and many other external factors, socioeconomic status may put you at a heightened chance of obesity. But although it's not your fault, this is your responsibility. I'm going to repeat that. Although this isn't your fault, this is your responsibility. Mark Manson famously said in an interview, if someone takes a fucking baby and leaves it on your front door, when you open the door the next day, that is not your fault, but it is your responsibility. So let's begin. So you're obese, you're not sure where to start. You want to get your life in order. Brilliant. Two things you need to look into. Exercise and training. We've heard this all before. It's important you don't 
see this as a dichotomy of just one and the other. It's important that you respect both of these elements together because without one, the other will fail. When people get injured, their diet goes to shit because every day you need to tell yourself and prove to yourself that there is an identity change going on in the background. So when you take the stairs or walk up an escalator, which won't be easy at first, when you get to the top, you have told yourself, I'm someone that takes the stairs. When you say no thanks to the first treat in the office or whatever it is, that's part of the identity. Getting a gym membership or equipment to train at home, that is part of your identity. You must pay into that identity every day. Because if you only train in the gym three days a week, that's not enough times to pay into your identity for you to believe the actual change. Sorry, I need lip balm. So you're training. Your training will complement your diet. So when you train well, it'll make you want to eat well. And your diet will complement your training. Because when you eat right, it'll make you feel better. And feeling better will make you more inclined to train. There has to be one of each every day that you pay into. Every single day. And on days you can't train and the fucking world is shit or whatever, you hit a step count. 10,000 steps would be cool. But if you go out tomorrow and you do as many steps as you can and you only do 5,000, that's the fucking benchmark. You get to set what success is. Not anyone else, you. And if 5,000 steps to you is a benchmark of success, then you fucking stick to it. There is a relationship between the two. Now, you do not need to count your calories. You don't. For many of you, I'm sure you've tried before. But it fucking helps. We need a reduction in calories somehow. There are many ways to skin a cat. Skipping breakfast will help. Not for any other magical reasons than it's not eating. You could push back to 1 p.m. for a few weeks, see if it works. Push it back to 2 p.m., 3 p.m., whatever it is. You will be hungry and it will fucking suck, but it will get easier. Remember, it's not difficult to be obese or overweight. It is difficult to rein this shit in. If you ever see budget smugglers on the side of a car, just know that's why I put them to dry. Personally, I like to backload my calories to later in the day. Even if you go super hungry and probably overeat at 5, 6 p.m., you're probably still going to have a reduction in calories to what you would have had before. Any fitness professional you follow before rants on about protein. Protein fills you up. And as a rule of thumb, many calculators online will be giving you too much because we base protein off lean body weight. I'm about 94, 95 kilograms. My lean body weight is like 90. So if I hit two grams, I get like 180. But because many of you are carrying excess weight, you could be 10, 20, 30 kilograms heavier than what that calculation is made for. I recommend that you aim for a protein goal equivalent to centimeters in height. So if you're 170 centimeters, 170 grams. But you're not going to hit this tomorrow. You're probably not going to hit this next week. But again, we like the step count. What are you going to do? James, I'm going to try and eat as much fucking protein as I can in my day tomorrow. How many grams did you get? 50. Cool. You set the benchmark. And then you aim for 55. Then you aim for 60. And this isn't a marathon. That benefits the equation. That benefits the equation. It's not essential for success. The training and exercising bit is essential for success. Creating a calorie deficit is essential for success. Paying into your identity change every single day is essential for success. Now, if you are someone that does want to have the freedom of tracking calories, because tracking calories means that if your friend's inviting you for a Domino's pizza later or a McDonald's or Wagamama's, you can log that in the first part of the day. Okay, I'm going to get the chicken katsu curry cool wow 1200 calories no i'll get the chicken ramen that's 600 so then i can have a pret sandwich chicken and bacon caesar 550 calories i'm now at 1100 i'll have that pret caesar one at 3 p.m my calorie total for the day is 1800 so that means i've got another six seven hundred calories that i can have before the pret baguette before the katsu that means i can have this many calories before i have the pret baguette middle of the afternoon and then i know what i'm gonna have at wagamama's after That's how you plan with calories. It's not like, ooh, here's one gram of broccoli. That's not how it works. I'll put a comment in the notes, either the whole way through this video. And if you do want to use my calorie calculator, it's there for you. Now, exercise modality. What form of exercise is best? Some people say cardio. Some people say weights. For you, I want you to appreciate this. Let's say you're someone that's carrying 40 kilograms of weight, excess weight. That's like me with a barbell with two green discs on either side. If you asked me to do some walking lunges up and down the gym, I'd be fucked. You are carrying a lot of weight. It's like you're wearing a weighted vest all the time. And this isn't me fat shaming you. This is me letting you know that any exercise modality you do in the onset will benefit you massively, whether it's steps. If you find the courage to go to a local gym, even sitting down on a plyometric box or a bench and standing back up is more than enough. You might feel uncomfortable in leg press. You feel uncomfortable going to squat rack. Fuck, I even feel uncomfortable going to some squat racks. And you're very simply just going to break up your training into pushing with your legs, pushing with your upper body, pulling with your upper body. 
In the onset, don't see training as a way to burn calories. See it as part of your identity change. When you start measuring your food and start to try and create a deficit and reduce your food intake and hit that protein, from a nutrition standpoint, you're changing your identity to stop being someone that eats more than they need each day. From your training side of things, you're someone that's going to the gym just to move, to train, to exercise. See it as more of a way of proving to yourself you're in this for the long run. Even if it's four or five sets of sitting down on a box and back up, going over and using something like a TRX, where you pull yourself in towards the anchor point for five sets of 10, 15, whatever it is. Maybe then doing some press-ups on the box. Even if you're in there for half an hour. That half an hour, when you go home and get a bit hungry and you crave the normal foods that you have in the house, you go, no, I train now. I do things differently now. Which moves me on to my next part in this video measuring success as you can see out the window we've got the the bds which is the budgie drying system uh, it's only ever failed on me once uh, in history before where i might have been going a little bit too fast there are two ways i want you to do this there's going to come a time that you get in bed in the evenings and there's only two things that i want you to do to have trained or have exercised and to have hit your calories that's it and even if you go over, you fucking log it, okay? Because you need to learn what going over does and the implications of it. You just log it every day. That's all I'm asking. You get in bed and go tick, tick. That's it. You can weigh yourself every morning after you've had a piss, but those weight loss measurements will not be linear. They might be down, 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 up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. It'll look more like a stock market over time and you do not quantify your self-worth to that measurement. We are just looking. You stick to those habits going to bed, hitting calories, I've trained today. If it gets to 9 p.m. and you've done nothing, if you walk around the fucking block listening to a podcast for 15 minutes, I will take that as training, but it has to be something because it is more of an identity change. When you're obese, you've set an identity and you've set a set of beliefs about who you are and what you can accomplish and you need to break those down. Now, my last point in this video is this. I want to remind you that inaction is still an action. Choosing to do nothing is choosing to do something. There's a saying that says, to say nothing is to say something. It's imperative that you do not choose an action. Because if you leave this video and don't implement what I've told you to do, you are choosing that. It's not like an option just went by and you didn't take it. You are choosing not to do it. And my final bit of tough love is this. You are a walking, talking encapsulation of your habits and identity. You have an opportunity from this video to change that. You download my fitness power, you use my calculator, you stick it in, you do something every day. You get those two points of success every fucking evening. You look back on it in a month two months, three months. And if you're someone that says to yourself, I need to lose 40 kilograms, you are wrong. You need to lose one kilogram or one pound. And the majority of you watching this can do that in a fucking week. And once you've accomplished that, all you need to set your sights on is the next one kilogram. And it will slow down. It might take two weeks. The next one might take three. The next one might take four. But if you stick to this stuff and sustain it long term, there will be a video similar to this designed for obese people. And when you see the title, you go, that's not me. That's for me, who I was a few years ago. We don't often talk about fate enough this morning went for a coffee went home no inclination to dip because it's absolutely freezing today then as we parked back up on the driveway i thought to myself let's go for a swim then let's get another coffee what happens whilst we're having a coffee a dream dog comes in i knew straight away this dog had a bit of kelpie in it i could just tell and i am obsessed with kelpies so i say excuse me what's your dog she goes kelpie i said yeah i thought it was a kelpie this is a sign from the universe telling me to get a dog. I've got to go home for tour dates, www.jamesmith.live, where you can still get tickets. Yesterday's video is all about that. Let's not go on about that. But when I come back, I'm giving a dog a home. And I've always loved the idea of getting a rescue. Her dog was a rescue. She gave me a website to look into it. Because that's the thing. If you go buy some expensive dog off the internet, that's one thing. But if you give a dog that needs a home a home, there's going to come that one day of the week where you can't take them for three walks and then you get two walks and they give you a little look. And you go, listen, mate, I gave you a home, you little cheeky bastard. You got heating and water and unlimited food and free rent. So that's why I reckon anyone watching this should get a rescue dog. Because anytime they give you that look because you want to live your life, you say, listen, free rent, shut up. I'm getting a dog, I'm gonna get a Kelpie. So these are just some interjected fun facts for you to digest in between the video. Because the rest of the video is about, don't know yet, I haven't found out. Please like and subscribe if you like the YouTube content. If enough people give it the love it deserves and needs, I'll keep producing it. All right, you have a good day, bye-bye. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. I'll be fixing people's problems within this realm every day for the foreseeable future. Thank you very much for tuning in. Speak to you later, bye-bye.